Hi everybody, Mr. Garrett here for another video on polynomial functions. Um, we're just going to kind of wrap up talking about the graphs of polynomial functions and how zeros, factors, solutions, x-intercepts are all related and uh, kind of tie up some loose ends. So the first thing I want to go over is this part right here where we're talking about um, the major concept of the fact that a zero, a factor, a solution and an x-intercept are all basically the same thing. We talked about this um, a little while ago, but uh, just to kind of review, if we have a polynomial and k is a zero of that polynomial, x minus k is a factor, um, k is a solution, and k is also an x-intercept on the graph. Now, <clears throat> we've talked about this in terms of finding the zeros and finding the factors and, and so on and so forth, but let's start with the zeros and the factors and, and then get into the polynomial. So <clears throat> one of the examples that we can use here is given these three zeros, negative two, one, and three, we can find a polynomial that has those three zeros. In fact, when I'm making up a quiz or a test and I want specific zeros, this is the method that I use. If negative two is a zero, we know, and I'm just gonna write that these are the zeros, so we know that, we know that our factors are, if negative two is a zero, x plus two is the factor. If I know one is a zero, then x minus one is a factor. And if I know three is a zero, then I know that x minus three is a factor. And once I have my factors, and what I can do is I can multiply, for example, these two, and then add multiply that third one to get my polynomial. So I'm just gonna let x plus two kind of hang out out front. Then I'm gonna do x times x, which is x squared. x times negative three, which is negative three x. Negative one times x, which is negative one x. And then negative one times negative three, which is a positive three. I'll simplify that polynomial and get x plus two times x squared minus four x plus three. And then I'll multiply these two together as well. And so I'll say x to the third minus four x squared plus three x. I just distributed the x to all three terms here. And then I'm gonna do plus two x squared minus 8x plus 6. And so my um, final polynomial, let me scroll down here a little bit, is going to be x to the third minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. This polynomial, and I'll call it f of x, has those zeros above negative two, one, and three. And if I wanted to prove it, I could graph it and see that negative two, one, and three are the x-intercepts. I could also go ahead and just um, factor it and FOIL it and do synthetic division and work back down. Another problem that's like this is giving us two and three i as zeros. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see this, but there's a complex conjugates theorem that basically says that if a plus bi is an imaginary zero, then a minus bi is also a zero. And so in addition to 3i and 2, we also know that negative 3i is a zero. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to come up with factors x minus 2, x minus 3i, and x plus 3i. Oops. So now what happens is I can FOIL these two, and I'd always FOIL these two first, um, simply because when I do that, I'm gonna get a binomial, because x minus three i times x plus three i is actually x squared minus nine i squared. If I cancel that i squared, make this plus nine, then I get x minus two times x squared plus nine and I can then FOIL these and get x to the third minus 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. And there's my polynomial. x cubed minus 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. And 
we're good to go. So I've come up with a polynomial with two non-real answers. I've come up with a polynomial with three real answers um, and just figured in that those zeros become factors. The factors you multiply and you get your polynomial. And so that's one of the things that we can do. So let's go ahead and try and graph uh, a function, polynomial function, using what we know already. Now a couple of key points that we need to make sure are in each graph is the x and y intercepts, any minimum and maximum points, and also the general shape and other nice points that are on the graph. And by nice points I mean like um, integer points that are easy to graph and, and fit in our window. Now when we look at this function f of x equals 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 1, I know right now that negative 1, negative 2, and 1 are my zeros and since they're also my zeros they're also my x-intercepts. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those on the graph. There's negative 2, there's negative 1, and there's 1. Now, I also know that the degree of this function is 3, because x times x times x is x cubed, and I know my leading coefficient <coughs> is going to be 2. And so, because it's a positive leading coefficient, and an odd degree, the graph is going to look something along the lines of that. Now, to find the y-intercept, I would just plug in 0, so I'd say f of 0, and I would get 2 times 0 plus 1 times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1, and then I'd have 2 times 1 times 2 times negative 1, and 2 times 1 times 2 times negative 1 is negative 4. So 0, negative 4 is my y-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's that point. Now, we know the graph's going to go up and down and up and down and end up going up like that, which is good. Um, we would like to know our maximums and minimums. There's no way to really do that without a calculator, so we'll do that in a second. And if I were to put in another point, like say negative 3, negative 3 would give me, let's see, negative 2 there, negative 1 there, and negative 4 there. Um, throw the 2 up, that's negative 4, that's 16. So it's going to be negative 16, which is way off the graph, and so that's not going to help us out very much. Same thing here, if I were to throw in 2, that would be 3, 4, that's 12, 24, uh, 24. So 224 is way up here, that's off the graph as well. So our graph is just going to kind of go and do something similar to this, coming all the way down and then back up. And our points off the graph are going to be way off the graph. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over here to my TI Inspire. And I'm going to insert a graph, and I'm going to type this in. And it was x plus 1, x plus 2, and x minus 1. Go back over here, make this an x. And when I do that, this is the graph that I get. And the nice part about this graph is I can easily see that negative 2, negative 1, and 1 are zeros. I can also see that negative 4 is my y-intercept and I'm going to change the window to spread this out a little bit. So to change the window I press menu, window, window settings. I'm just going to go from negative 5 to 5 by 1's. I'm going to go negative uh, 10 to 10. And there's my graph. Now again, I can see the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, that's good. The other important point was to find the maximums and minimums. And to find that, I'm going to go Menu, Analyze Graph, Minimum. And here's our minimum point. And you can see down here it's asking for the lower bound. So I'm just going to put and click to the left of that minimum and then to the right of that minimum. And there's our point, all right? Point two, one negative uh, 4.23, all right, if I rounded, and that's our minimum point. So I could put that on our graph. I could also go ahead and find the maximum point. To the left and to the right of the maximum, I can click and drag that over, and there's our maximum point, negative 1.55 and 1.26. So there's two other points I could put on the graph. Now, <clears throat> We've already looked at the um, some of the other values, but I can press Control T 
And when I press Control T, I get the table of values. And you can see 224 is a point, and negative 3, negative 16 is a point. And this graph doesn't have a whole lot in between the zeros, um, but that's all possible ways that we could go ahead and do that. If I wanted to find like half points, I could go to Table and edit table settings, and instead of having a table step of 1, I could do a table step of 0.5. And you can see then that this, if I adjust it, this is going to be negative 1.5, 1.25, negative 1, 0, negative 0 0.5, negative, negative 2.25. They're not nice points, but they can help me draw that graph in that much easier. And you can see then I can get a couple more points on my graph by going up and down, and that works out really well.